Welcome to How to Use Purchase Orders in QuickBooks Online. I'm Tracy and I'm going to show you uh, the best way to use your inventory and create it. Okay, so we're going to go over to the gear and products and services. Products and services are the items that you sell and purchase, in this case, on a purchase order. If you haven't uploaded your items and you need to, there is an import file where you can download a sample file and put your inventory items in along with cost, quantity, and any information you have for the service, sale, or type. If not, you can add them by hand by selecting an inventory item. An inventory item keeps a physical inventory count. A non-inventory item is an item that we sell. We're not keeping quantity tracking on. Service is usually your labor. And then bundling, you can bundle your inventory items to make one end item. Main thing when you're setting up the inventory item, in this case, this is a pump, and in there our sale is a type of design fountain and it goes to an income every time I sell it of sales of product income. Just like purchasing, if we do purchase a product we would go ahead and put what the purchasing information and that it's a cost of goods to us. Now we don't have to put in the cost here, we can leave that blank, but it's always safe to put in that sale price if you're selling a product uh, for the same price every time. Unless you're giving a discount or you've upped your rates, you would probably come into the item if you have people working for you, so they don't have to guess at what your sale price is, basically. As far as uh, the inventory items, they will give you in this um, uh, dashboard the quantity on hand, uh, of course the cost, and then uh, the drop down here, you can run reports on where uh, the inventory items have gone. But the main thing we want to concentrate on is purchase orders. So in the purchase order, we're going to take the plus sign and select purchase order. And the top entry is the vendor's name. Select that and you can tab through. It will take you through all the different um, items, mailing addresses, uh, if you're going to use a sales rep on there. And then we have uh, item detail. These are the items that we're selling um, and the quantities. And this is the price that we're sending off the purchase order for. It also gives you an option to delete a purchase order here, just so you know that as well. And then up at the top, you saw the category detail. This category detail is just an option to bypass. I haven't created a, an inventory item, but I'll point it directly to uh, the category that it is uh, supposed to go to on the expense side. Therefore, creating the uh, amount here that will follow over for the bill. So they're asking for a disposal fee of $25. Um, at the bottom of that form here is an option to add an attachment. If you had intricate drawings or anything you needed to add, you can also add a memo in here as well before you print this, or you can always email this to them as well. Next up, we're going to go over to the bill. Grab the plus sign, go to the bill. I'm going to put in my vendor, which is Norton. Norton Lumber, I may have 10 uh, purchase orders out, but here's the one we just created, and if I add that in, it actually adds it um, with all the categories. I can change the amounts if I need to, but what I've done is I've added the customer to it because I want to track the cost directly uh, to that customer or job, and by adding that in here, it will give me a report, so this is really powerful. It can do three different um, things in here that produces different reports. So I can get uh, physical inventory, I can get customer, I can get costs, 
And in here, it also gives the billable option. Billable means I haven't put a cost in there, but I want to remember these items need to go to this customer. And it will actually populate the invoice with these items. At that point, you'd have to change the sale price. So again, we discussed that earlier. Um, if you're using other people in the office, they, you don't want them to guess what the sale price is. I'd put the sale price in. And then the bill just is ready for you to pay, just like all your other bills. Now we want to see a history of what we've done. We can go over to the expense, select vendors. And in the vendors, it shows you all the different transaction types, bills, purchase orders, credit cards, and items that still need to be paid or printed. Now we'll go over to the plus sign and select invoice. In the invoice, we're going to select that customer, Mr. Rodriguez. Go ahead, select him, and we'll select the items along with the extra item that we had known about. These numbers aren't hard-coded. You can change them. If you want to up it to 300, you can change that as well and send him off his invoice. But where people are mostly getting confused is that um, the sale price, if you use it as a billable expense, comes up with the cost, not the sale price. And then they're going, well, why didn't that uh, come through properly? Well, again, we're hard coding this price when we set up the item. That's why the product's so important to go over. All right, next up, I'm going to run a report to see what I made off of that customer or job by going to reports, income, and customer summary. Here we've got Mr. Rodriguez with the income that we charged him minus our expenses for a net income on that job. Well, thank you for joining Purchase Orders for Online QuickBooks. If you need any personal training, please give me a call at the number below or email. Thank you.